some of the things that you see in hip hop right now or some of the themes, the message is go to the store and buy, so, you know, be a consumer. Yeah, consumer. That's why it's up to people like us who really know, you know, who are the true gatekeepers of this shit to say, wait a minute, that's not what the fuck this. I don't give a fuck what you say. This is real hip hop and we're gonna tell you what real hip hop is and show you what real hip hop is. Welcome to On The Child. I'm your host, Tragedy Gaddafi, along with my co-host, Mr. Act. What up, what up? Hear it on the child. The guest comes through and makes their signature dish just for you. Food for thought, real conversation. Y'all make sure y'all do the dishes on the child. Let's go. Welcome to On the Child with myself, Tragedy Gaddafi, and my man, Mr. A. What up, what up? Today we have a very special guest. We got no other than the God, Lord Jamal. Lord Jamal the God. Peace. We on deck, man, on the child, man. Uh -huh. So, Lord Jamal, what's good, man? I'm great. How are you? I'm gracious. I'm gracious. Oh. Yes. Today, what are we making? Today, we are making some wild caught salmon, okay? Uh, all right. Wild caught, not okay. farm raised, okay. because that farm raised be that frankenfish. We don't want mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, with some uh, baby red potatoes, which okay. we're probably going to do. Uh, a garlic mash from scratch, okay. you mm. know. And then we're gonna, you know, for the vegetable, we're just gonna have some spinach, you know what I mean? Yeah. Some, some, spinach. some baby spinach, something nice, sauteed, you know, something simple, quick. No doubt, healthy green. Yeah, you strong, know. Strong like Popeye. And uh, yeah, we're gonna put it all together and you know, yeah, it's probably gonna be like a uh, mustard, uh, dill, <laughs> salmon factual, type factual. of deal. You know, we're gonna bake it and all that. Keep it nice and healthy and all that, you know. Yeah. And and with these few ingredients we here, we're gonna we're gonna make something marvelous, you yeah. know. I gotta say, I gotta say that you made sure that uh, we got special, you know, you had special specifics on how you what kind of salmon you wanted, like you said, the wild caught. True indeed. And you know the almond milk and everything, which we'll get into, you know what I'm saying. But right now we're gonna go from here to you preparing your meal, and we're gonna see what this is about, man. Okay. All right. Okay, Lord I can Jamal. just do this on my own, huh? Yeah, you can get, okay. you can give it. Right, we can help you out. Okay, Listen, we I was gonna say, maybe y'all yeah, can. Yeah, okay, yeah, fill a pot or something <laughs> here and there. All right, all right. Yes. Now, first of all, I appreciate y'all got like straight, we gotta bust these open. Like, yeah, like yeah. all the ingredients, ingredients. are super fresh. Yeah, super you gotta fresh. bust the seals on everything, yes. except for the used pepper y'all use. The pepper. used pepper. The night before. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I brought some used dill. Yeah, I got I to gotta say so, that. As soon as he pulled up, he, he was like, yo, I forgot to mention. He had a very specific specific shopping list. And he was like, yo, I forgot to mention the dill. And she was, but then he was like, he pulled, came out of his pocket, <laughs> pulled out the, the dill weeds. Okay. Delivered. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're dealing with the sea salt. Okay. Um, and why sea salt and not regular iodized salt? Well, because sea salt is more natural, you okay. know, when they, the iodized salt and all that, it's, 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 it's just, this is better for you, okay. you know what I mean? So, you know, I'm not the most healthy motherfucker you're going to find, but I try to stay on that healthy side of eating and, and, and you know what I mean, go to the better alternative. You know yeah, I mean? it got to be working for you because look, I'm looking at so as I'm looking back at some of your videos, I'm looking at you back in the '90s when, in, 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 you know, late '80s when we met. Right. And I'm looking at you now, and, and I told my yeah, and I said, yeah, he looks younger now than he did. I said that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it yeah. got to be, it got to be some validity to using this natural. Absolutely. Ingredients. There was a long time where I was a pescatarian, and all I ate was just fish. And that's pescatarian, just fish. Yeah, like no chicken or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And when I say fish, I don't mean any scavengers like lobster or shrimp yeah, or right. actual fish. Like that. fish. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, not like uh, salmon, whiting, stuff okay. like that. Um, red snapper, okay. things of that nature. You know, sometimes tuna. Tuna's not the best, but you know, yeah. I'll eat it though. Sometimes, yeah. especially what, a fresh. What about Jack tuna. Mac? You know, <laughs> that's a real honor, child. It came out. It you came know, out. It came I'm out. not, I'm not really a Jack Mack fan yeah. like that. You know what I mean? Because fortunately, I never really had to 
do no bids like that. You yeah. know what I mean? So so let's get to uh let's get to busting these ingredients is open. Okay. Let's get to preparing this. I'm eager to start and okay. help out. Not okay. just have you alone. Yeah, cool. But help you. All right. Thank you. So we we'll, we already started preheating this fancy ass oven. <laughs> okay. This is a beautiful kitchen, my bad effect that y'all got out here. Um so we started preheating this at 350. Okay. Um for the salmon. Rinsing the potatoes. Yes, let's rinse them off and then put them in some hot water. We're going to boil them and get them softened up and all of that type of stuff. I'm going to start seasoning the salmon. Grab these up. As I now, rinse them. Now, how are we going to do it? Are we going to peel these or going to cut them or just? Not, just put them in there for now. Okay, all right. This is because they're small. See, yeah. that's why I chose these two instead of bigger potatoes. Cause that'll take longer. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So smaller Very potatoes. Wise. Very wise. We're uh, moving faster. Put those in there. Now, the potatoes. We've washed our hands already, yes, ladies sir. and gentlemen, yes. just to let you know. Uh, so we're not touching any ingredients with dirty hands. You know, as we. Uh, mm, look at him drop that. Yeah, as we uh, <laughs> season our. You want to Let come from that. a higher height so why that so, why so high? So that it's even, okay? Mm. It'll, it, it drops more even. Every time we do this, I learn more. more. <laughs> it drops more even over the food when you do it like that. So you just, yeah, take a little. Couple pinches. Mm-hmm. And then throw some over your shoulder. Okay. Wow. <laughs> they say that's good luck, right? I just said for the answers. You know. <laughs> for the answers. Good energy. Okay, now uh, we're going to take this. This is some pepper from a higher height again. You see how it evenly. Mm. And you're right. I see it's, you know, spreading them on, over eat, eat real even. Right. Put a little olive oil okay, on the bottom of the pan. So you're coating the pan. So I'm just coating yeah. the pan, okay. yeah, so that, you know. When we put this, the salmon in here, or some people like to say salmon. The salmon. Okay. The salmon. The salmon. Um, you know, we don't want the skin sticking all crazy to the. Um, yeah, I don't like that. Bottom of the pan. So, we put that there for now. Good. Now we take our bowl. And we're gonna take just a little bit of Dijon mustard. Get fancy. For all those That's watching, we're slick ricking the mustard. True indeed. One eye mustard pouring method. True indeed. By Lord Jamal. Uh huh. In hip hop, we call that slick, slick ricking it. <laughs> um, now we're going to take a little mayonnaise. We're getting fancy now. All I know is it's more mustard than mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. We're going to mix that up real good. Whip it. Whip it. It's all, whip it, whip it, it's all in the wrist. <laughs> Look at him. Uh oh, look at him. It's getting super Dijon y. Mm. Yep. Oh, that just smells good. Just just, just like that. It come at you. Ooh, it comes at like you. That. So, you're going to put it on before you put it? All right, all right. So, now you take this mixture. It's just not as fucked with as the farm raise. It's not so Frankenstein. Exactly, because the farm raise, they actually do things that take away from the nutrients in the fish mm. ra rather than, um, you know, add to the uh, nutrients. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's natural. So it, that which leads me to ask you this, right? How do you feel about uh, hip hop right now in terms of, do you feel like a lot of, a lot of it's natural you know, origins or whatever, or, or, or vibe or whatever is taken out of it. How you feel about that? Well, I, you know, it's funny that you say that natural because I think a lot of it has been, um, has been Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I don't think that if, if hip hop were left to its own devices, mm -hmm. that, you know, some of the things that you see in hip hop right now or some of the themes that are going on would be prevalent like that if it were not for an unseen hand mm. in the um, affairs mm. and uh, you know direction of hip-hop 
I, I know like when we started out, you know, we had in our music more of a message. Definitely. Today, I mean, there's a message, but it's not as... It's not our message. Yeah. The message is go to the store and buy, so, you know, be a consumer, yeah, consumer. and, you know, be a, 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 a pill popper and, you know, consume more. And if you're angry, kill somebody and, you know, all of that. Kill yourself. Kill yourself. Those are some of the messages. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah. But that's not, that doesn't encompass hip hop. In total, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's just kind of what is mainstream right now. Okay. And what they're trying to, uh, you know, make us feel like hip hop is. That's why it's up to people like us who really know, you know, who are the true gatekeepers of this shit to say, wait a minute, that's not what the fuck this. I don't give a fuck what you say. This is real hip hop, and we're gonna tell you what real hip hop is and show you what real hip hop is. And, and it's saying that too, like, cause I had it. Now we got the deal. We got the, oh, let's got go to the deal. deal. Yeah, all right, right. all right, not to cut some, you. Some deal we go ahead. Um, yeah, so I was talking to somebody recently and they were saying how like today, hip hop, today's, the youth today, if it makes them feel the way it made us feel at the time when we were or heard hip hop, who are we to say that that's not hip hop? You understand where I'm coming from? I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. And I who's to say it? Mm -hmm. I'm to say it. Okay. The people that created it are to say it. Okay. You see what I'm saying? The same people that say, you know, again, if you go to the Guggenheim Museum, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Who's to say what art gets hung on those walls and what doesn't? Yeah, there's some criteria. Yeah. So who's setting the criteria? The, 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 curia right. the curators yeah, so we'll of the museum are the ones that say that. Yeah. Who are the curators? People that have studied this shit for a long fucking time, more than fucking 30 years or however fucking long they need to, to be an expert at this shit. Mm -hmm. They're the ones, you know, that could look at this and be like, that's a masterpiece. That's just some fucking crayon on a fucking construction paper. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, like. They're both drawings, but who's the one that decides? So there gotta be those gatekeepers and people that decide the criteria. This is ready to go in the oven, yeah. Let's go. Oh. This is ready to go in the oven. Um, so what we got our oven on? 350. All right. 350. Got you. Real chef. Wild, Wild caught, food. no microwave fish. Who came up with the concept brand Nubians? We were uh, we were having a like a naming session mm -hmm. one day. Now we knew that we wanted to be on some positive, factual. You know what I mean? Knowledge base. We had decided that, like from Jump Street. Mm -hmm. At the time, I was reading like a lot of Dr. York books. Even though, as a, you know, five percenter, it's not like I was trying to be down with his shit. But he had some, you know, he had some good books yeah, at the it time. Was, it was relation. Had, had some good information in there, and in there. He used to use the word Nubian a lot, yeah. you know, to describe original people. Yes, yes. And I was like, this is a word I had heard before, but not that much. And I knew that black people were kind of like, kind of didn't like the word African in a way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like had a negative connotation. I was like, well, Nubian is a way to like. Sound fly. Yeah. It sound like a, you know what I mean? So we, I kind of like just brought that Nubian into the mix. Yeah. And so dudes was liking the Nubian and then we were just kind of like Nubian this, like kind of just kind of think of some shit. And then we talking and I'm just like, Nubian, brand new. Brand, so you know what I mean? Brand new, yeah, brand, brand new. Nubian. Yeah. Definitely. And I was like, you know what I mean? Do it out there, brand Nubian. Niggas was like, okay. Niggas was liking that, but then I, we might have had another name now Rumab, all kind of shit, you know, but then some Nubian force, I think, with some other shit. Wow. But then like, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so we took a vote. Yeah. It was brand Nubian, you know what I mean? 
And and now keep in mind we was we were shopping a deal with no name to the group. We didn't even have a record. That's that's another thing I wanted to ask you, yo. Like, I mean, I, I kinda understand, but I want the people to you know, get an idea. What's it? What was it like getting signed at 21, 22 years old, man? It was a, it was great. It was yeah. a dream come true. It was, you know, it was everything that you know. You what feel like you have been working for towards. Yeah. yeah, it was like, oh yeah, I made it. Like you know what I mean? Like I did it. My goal, you know, I get to do something that a lot of people don't get to do. You know what I mean? Um, living my dream yeah like this is my dream now hopefully now that we sign we can come out and people will actually like listen to our shit and and maybe they'll like one or two you know maybe they'll like a couple of our records and then the business <laughs> <laughs> and then the shit comes and out then and the you're business. like wow like yeah. wait a minute yeah and then you start so now your dreams start like just going you almost surpassing your dream because you hoping Man, I hope I could be up with there with the Big Daddy Canes and of the course. and the Coogee Raps and the and the Public Enemies and you know. That but happens. then when you really up that there happens. with the, you know, and these dudes know who you are, they 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 telling you that they're a fan of your music and and you just like, wow, I'm here, I arrived, I made it. Drinking a 40 with, with, with DMC from Run DMC right now. This is crazy. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, like, yeah. like. I don't want to, I want to, I'm loving this. You know, I love always talking to you because you got so, we got so much history together and we've both been able to watch each other's history through the game. So I always love talking to you. It's always a, a reminder to me of hip hop. I don't want to talk too much. Are we losing? The timing on this food, because I don't want to mess that meal up. I'm nah, hungry. we good. We good. We can. We can. We we eyeballing yeah, it right now. Say, he didn't even set a time. Yeah, he, just, yeah, he didn't even turn around enough, and I just wanted to make sure. He didn't know what it's right. I just had to make sure, man. I just had to make sure, man. But um, yeah. So now we got wake up. That was the first single, and Pooh was primarily on that solo, pretty much. Yes. Yeah, I was kind of more or less in the background on that song. On yes. that particular song. Right. Yeah. But the but the message and all that was so strong and and just what we was about that we didn't mind sitting in the back on that one like you know what I mean that's right like and, you know what I mean and Pooba was that dude at the time he was the one that got us signed he was the one that enabled us to shop um, a deal with no music and no name and that was to yeah, election with that, via Dante how do you yeah. shop how a deal that, with no yeah. music and no name. Yeah. Because he had a group, Master Ceremonies, That's prior right. to our group, and they had a few hits, and they was fucking strong. So he was able to call around to certain people and offer the strength of his previous group and what he did previously, they were taking his calls. Mm -hmm. And they were saying, come on in, let's talk. You know what I mean? And so we went to see the dude Dante Ross with nothing. Wow. We ain't had wow. no music, you no serious? name. Not even a nothing. demo? Nothing. That's he was it. like, Pooh Bah, you know, I love your shit. Man, I'm, you got these two dudes with you. I'm sure they dope too, but you know, I'm going to need to hear something. Mm. You know what I mean? So we was like, all right, we'll be back. Took us like two weeks to, to get borrowed studio time, going up to Jazzy J's studio every night Jazzy in the Bronx. Jazzy J, wow. Allerton Avenue, get, um, you know, sitting through sessions, waiting to the end. What was that process? Yeah, what was that process like? We was going up there every night for two weeks. I know that. Yeah. And at the end of the night, it's like if he wasn't too tired, because we wasn't paying for this. He was, this was on the strength. You know what I mean? If he wasn't too tired and he, yo, can we play some records? And You know what I mean? So we had to play the records. Then finally it was like, all right. Then we get another, okay, we got the record. Now we need another night to, to sample the record. You know what I mean? All right, we got the record sample. Right. Your niggas go home, you know, write your shit. Da 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 da. Now, okay, shit's written. All right, now we need to fucking get a night where we can record the shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, so it took two weeks to do all of that, and finally, we got one song. Who did Who did the original? Who did the video for Wake Up? Um, Fat Five Freddy. Fat Five Freddy. Right. And this is this is this is pre MTV. No, wow, this is prime time MTV. That's crazy. That's why we we kind of picked him because 
we like, man, Fat Five Freddy, we definitely gonna get played we in, on. We M- good. We in. Yeah, we rotation. And then we MTV and then MTV banned the video. Why? Because we had a representation of the devil in the video. Was he like? It was a black man in white face. Mm. Mm. With a, with a business suit on and all that, mm. and, the lady and horns the and all that. Electric. No, Electra was cool with it. It was, it was MTV. That was like no, 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 no. They was like, wow. we like this video and we'll play it, but you got to take that out. And we was like, fuck that. You know what I mean? Did they tell you why you had to take it out? I mean, I, but yeah, well, they felt like it was, you know, yeah, they didn't like those those images. And a black man in white face. Yeah, they thought it was like a reverse racism in a way. You yeah. know what I mean? So we was like, fuck that. We're not taking it out. But then they, you know, Electra taught us real quick. Listen, this is business, motherfucker. You can stand by your principles all we want. You got that call? We didn't spend that. No. You got that. We didn't get no call. call. They just, they just edited it. They said, go ahead and edit it. MTV. We're cool with it. Uh, we, need to, we, we don't give a fuck back. what these guys say. We're getting this money back. No, we're getting this money back. We're getting this, we're getting this money back. back. So MTV money. started playing it, and you'll be hard pressed to go on the internet and find the original the version, version right now. Yeah. So we had the demo. Mm-hmm. He loves the demo. He's like, all right, so now we need a name for the group. And then that's when we was like, okay, we'll be back. We went back to the studio, had a naming session, came up with Brand Nubian. Came back, was like, Brand Nubian? Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, yo. And he was like, because we wasn't even fully sure. And it, Brand Nubian? He's like, oh, that's crazy. Like, that's it. That's and we was like, yeah, Brand Nubian. Like, like, you know what I mean? Brand. Like, it sounded like a brand. Like, Brand Nubian. Was, it sounded like a brand as soon as you heard it. And so, yeah. And then, yeah, that was it. Album took off, successful. Yeah. And then Pooba left the group. Probably in the middle of all of that, actually. Really? Yeah. That's rare. No, it's the real shit. That's yeah. rare for somebody to leave at the height of. Wow. It's usually if things go south, it was like, yo, shit ain't working out now. It was working out when it was good, but wow. that's rare. So, yeah. Pooba leaves the group. Um, I could imagine there was some adjustment. Y'all had to make some adjustments, like, like, like artistically, but just mentally. Talk to everybody. Everything. Well, I mean, it was a time when we had to, we were in between the first album and the next album. We still got to do shows and shit. Because it's like big bros leaving the group. Not that right. Y'all, that, that y'all all made brand new, beer, let's be clear, but right. this is the big bro now. Right. Who taught you how to slap box a little bit. You know right. what I mean? So, but, but, but see, fortunately, when he was teaching niggas how to slap box, I was really paying attention. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm the one that was really doing the knowledge. Like, you know what I mean? And so, like, you know, I learned how to sample from Poobah. Like, he's the one that taught me how to listen to a record and and how to hear the sample. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? How to hear that piece. Like, and how to take... What does that mean? Is it something you can explain? I mean... If you could... Yes and no. I mean, there's, there's... Within certain records, especially funk records and shit like that in the 60s and 70s, there's little morsels, not just the breakbeat part, but there's little morsels of gems of music that can be manipulated, but you kind of got to be able to hear it. You got to recognize it. You got to see it almost. Yes, and what you could do with it. That's what I mean. You got to be able to hear it and then see what you could do with That's it. That's what I kind of Yes. So, nice. you're like, oh, if I take that piece and then, oh, that should be crazy. And so that's kind of where you get the, but you got to have that sampler's ear kind of, and like, Poobah just kind of showed me Prices. how to listen yeah, to that. Prices. That's Prices. You see, because the first album, no, none of us was touching no buttons. We just telling the, the, the engineer what to do. Mm. You know what I mean? Um... So on the second one, you had the concept. But I that's ended up the technical side, like. Yeah, we had we we knew yeah. what we wanted. We just didn't know how to really do it. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Pooh Bah knew how to play keyboards and shit like that, and but he wasn't fully fucking with the shit either. Maybe a little more than we was, but yeah. not really. It was the next one that after standing over people's shoulders and really watching motherfuckers, it was like you know what? We buying our own equipment because niggas try to take advantage of us at mm. first. They thought, oh, Poobah's not here. We could, like, mm. 
we could raid their budget. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> hit these <laughs> niggas. Yeah. I'll, I'll do beats for y'all yeah, and I try to, you. like, yeah, yeah, I got you and try to. I'm like, whoa. And I'm, you know, at the time, he's like, 30,000. <laughs> nah, nah. He, he, a dude might have charged like four grand, but yeah, to but me, that was a lot. Like, yeah. like, I said, for four grand, we could get our own fucking equipment for that much. And we, that's what we ended up doing, some shit like that. Um, and then produced the whole In God We Trust shit on our own, except for Punk's Jump Up, which Diamond D did. Punk's Jump Up, one of my favorite joints. Yes. Right? Classic. When you talk about someone specifically on that record. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me, God. Listen, it was uh, it was just we were talking to the world. I feel okay. like you know what I mean. Like we were talking to the world okay. because I feel like everybody felt like they they was underestimating us. Like they didn't think that we was gonna be able to do it without the big homie. You know what I mean? And we was like, fuck that. You know what I mean? Like we beating down all that, all that talk. Yeah, you know I felt I mean? that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we was talking to the world, basically. Yeah, yeah. You know it, what I it mean? Was a, it was definitely anybody a that that felt like other than what we was feeling. You know what I mean? About the Nubian rain had fallen. Basically. Okay. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it was. I'll feed you, God. Gaddafi. We're back right now. We've just made mustard, dill, dill, salmon. Yes. Salmon. Salmon. With Lord Jamal. Yes, you, sir. You know what we're going to do? We're going to get into this dish. We're going to taste it. We're going to let you know how it tastes. It looks marvelous. I know it looks like you got it from a restaurant. I, it it really does. does. Nah, it really does. Definitely and you was over there like serious. Like he was like, he wasn't talking to nobody. And yeah. trust me, using these plates. That was the move. Is the difference between this, you know, looking classy and looking like we're at the fucking cafeteria or okay. some fucking thing. I gotta say, hey. he stressed the play game. Come on, bro. To the play game. To the, to the play, play game. game. Mustard dill salmon. Mustard dill salmon. On the channel. Homemade mash. Woo. Red potatoes. Saute spinach. Spinach. So. We are back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love Jamal. Yes. Your presence has been duly noted. Yes, thank you, sir. We oh. should taste your dish. Why, thank you. We to should try. To see if it is suitable. It looks delectable. For a king's palate. Yes, for the king's. For king. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> palate. <laughs> All right, folks up. Office. Folks up. Folks up. Folks up. Folks go in. Folks go in. No, go ahead. You know, I made it. I want you guys to try. I will taste after you guys taste, because you got to tell me what you feel about it. You taste each thing individually, and I, you know, I sometimes like to take those full. I'm gonna go individually. Bursting. Mmm. Yo. Yo. That's fucking good. Off the no bullshit? <laughs> no, wait, wait. I dropped my phone. This shit is real. Off the no bullshit movie intro? That shit is slamming. That shit is about something. <laughs> that shit is Up slamming. top? That shit is Down low? Yo, this shit is right. <laughs> Woo. Why, thank you. I, I want to talk about this for a minute. Okay. Um, I make fish. I'm never good at making fish. Um, I got to say, the texture's right. It's, it's bursting with flavor and at the same time it's not yoking me up. Now he's going for the mash. Whew. What you think? Restaurant quality. Oh my god, sure. look what I did. <laughs> that was fucked up. Why are you there? Well, I have a good friend who owns a restaurant in New Hampshire. It is amazing. The salmon I get from him is banging. This is better. 
Sorry, Rob. Love you, but this yo, shit right here is. Yo, off the no bullshit. Seriously. All jokes are shot. Not even playing. Because a lot of people do the, you know, the, the packs of the, you know, the dry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We just did made real mashed potatoes. It's just called now. from scratch. Mm-hmm. From scratch. I'm even the salmon though. The salmon's better than his shit, and he he gets busy. That is spinach, man. That is good. And I noticed mm. how you he, he Lord Jamal kind of like caramelized the spinach. He kind of like fried the spinach before with the sautéed spinach, the garlic. Excuse me. Kind of like uh, sautéed the garlic before he put the spinach in. This is like uh. uh Even the spinach is good. <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, seriously. Um, Why, well, thank you, brothers. This is good. Mm. I don't like Why to do, I you like, know? oh, oh, oh. See, I like to do, there the triple, you go. Triple threat? Yeah, you got to get one of those where everything triple together. Okay. And then, mm. Mm. Wow. You Bro, that I'll come back and make right. a lasagna or some fucking thing. You come back again? Oh. No. Come back, do a lasagna, fucking. Oh, I know you didn't. We set make a whole time. chickens, huh? You didn't set a timeline, but how approximately? About how 30, long? 30 minutes. About 30. It depends on how big the fish is and the thickness and all of that. You see what I'm saying? It could, it could be 20 minutes. You see what I'm saying? And when looking at it, is there like a, a color you're looking for to tell it's done? You know, a lot of times when you see that white, opaque. Especially in salmon, when you start to see some of that, that'll give you an indication. Oh, he got the language down. He yeah. got the jargon. <laughs> he got the jargon down. I, said, no, I was eating. He said opaque. I was like, if you yeah. when you start to see shit like that, yeah, then you'll um, you kind of know that it's done, and you'll see the oils. Like, remember when we opened your oven and we saw it, the oils was kind of like yeah. bubbling. Yeah. That kind of lets you know too. When I make fish. My problem is when I make fish, I, I can make a, a few things, okay? Y'all will see later in the shows. But when I make fish, I hardly ever make, if it's not fried fish, I hardly ever make mm. it perfect. Because fish is tricky. You can't cook it too much. You got to know what kind of, all fish is different, though. You're right. So some fish will dry out faster than faster. others. And you're overcooking. You got to know what kind of fish you're cooking. That's why at some point, I turned this off. Obviously, you did the knowledge. You know what you because doing. I don't. I don't want the salmon to get dry. No, because some people will have a very dry salmon. Yeah, yeah. you don't want that. That's it. This Yo, is that like be funny. this is an excellent flaking date. off the bone. If there was a bone, like this you know is an I mean? excellent date meal. Yeah, especially on that. Salmon. You know, like I would make this for a date, like because you know, it's light, and I would win. Right, it's light. She'd be impressed. I'd be light. And that, in that sense, when I say I would win, mm. I'd be like, you still have en- energy to smash at the end. I said, you know what I mean? <laughs> that is bad. Give you that smash energy. Now I, I eat a lot, but I don't cook enough. It's gonna be good for me. It's gonna be good for me. You too. like my food, though. I'm cooking cool. food. Man. But listen, I'm gonna tell you this right here. That's slamming. Sucks. Slamming salmon right now. Here. now <laughs> keep in mind, the mashed potatoes is with almond milk. It's not with regular milk. It's, it is with almond milk. I could have threw sour cream in there. I've been getting a lot of flack about almond milk on my page on my Instagram, and people, some people who say that almond milk is not good for you. Yes, because it, you know some. Why all, do they say that? Because almonds contain arsenic. Wow, really? <laughs> right. So, really, I like I drink coconut milk. You did say coconut or almond milk. Right. The coconut first, but mm. I would rather the almond than, than the real milk. <laughs> it's arsenic. I don't know how good it is for me. You know, man, but it's, it's, it's in this trace amount. It's not like it's just over time. If no, you keep it. doing it, keep yeah. doing it, keep doing it, it could build up. So you might want to alternate between coconut and almond if you're a lover of almond milk. All right? Make sense? All right, cool. Love you more. Again, and I'll say this. Go ahead. You scrammed it. Yeah, let's get you, back brother. to this. Um, let's get back to this interview. Let's let's go back into this, man. The food was great. You did your thing. Not that I slept, but I would never sleep on your cooking. Nah, that shit was a, that shit was ever ever ever. Seriously, slamming salmon. Thank you. Hey, what would you say the official name of it is? 
the official name of what we made? Yeah, you, you said uh, mustard dill salmon. Mustard dill salmon. Mm -hmm. Garlic mash. Garlic mash. Fresh garlic mash. Fresh garlic mash with uh, baby red potatoes and sautéed uh, spinach. Right. Garlic spinach. Talk about it. All right. Fresh garlic. When we come back, we're gonna get back into Lord Jamal and see where he's coming from on different levels, man. We on the child. We feeding the culture. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eat it up. We back on the channel. <laughs> oh man, that was yo Jamal. I ain't gonna yo. Yo, that was. Let's be real.com. Let's be real.com of the no bullshit tour and DVD Blu-ray. Yo, son, <laughs> that was like one of them type of meals. Like if you was if you was going through some shit at your foundation in the crib with your lady, you know, you try to get her back and she come in the crib and look and you make one of the meals. I'm like, listen, listen. I ain't trying to fight with you, baby. This Let's eat first and then talk. That'll get you. It might get you somewhere. No, that, 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 that yo, that was that was official, bro. I gotta I gotta give you a, like a, a backwards karate chop on that one. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. Good yes, aura, good aura, man. Thank you. Brother. I learned a few things. Thank you. Oh man. Oh, man. You see, I kept eating. I scraped the skin. I have no shame. I scraped the skin. Yeah, we, we, Place was cleaned up in this bitch. Yes, yes, Place yes. was clean. Place yes. was no clean. No front either. No yeah. front sink. Initially now, so when I hear, when I go back, I go back in some of the catalog, I see that you were on Electra at first mm -hmm. via Dante Ross. Mm -hmm. Now I see the Tommy Boy logo on there. Right, because we just did something recently with Tommy Boy. How do you feel about doing something with Tommy Boy after the likes of... De La Soul. You know what? That happened afterwards. That okay. little story happened after we had already did some shit with them. Okay. Um, all I could say is, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. Yes. Yeah. Um, the deal that De La Soul signed when they were like at that time, yeah, nineteen or whatever the fucking yeah. case may uh -huh. be, is not the same type of shit that we just got into as grown as men with, with Tommy Boy. Okay, makes sense. So, you know, it's a whole kind of different relationship and and from what it seems like, they just caught into some shit from back then. You know what I mean? Yeah, where, yeah. where, you know, you got people that be like, yo, well, this is business. This is what it says on the paper. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then there's you that signed it. then there's that moral shit though where where you and I on some you know, just on some man shit will feel like, well well you know that paper's wrong, bro. Right. You know that paper represented a, a me that didn't know. Now I know better. Can we just say fuck that and, and like and do it right, do it the right way? Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. And now a motherfucker's either gonna be like Stick to the business's business, which America promotes, uh -huh. you know. And they're like, oh, well, I'm sorry, but it's just business. I'm sorry. I, I can't, my hands are tied. It's business, you know. Or we could start, you know, incorporating what we already know exists in business, which is there, business is personal sometimes, okay? This is why shit gets crazy sometimes because feelings get hurt. And all that type of shit in business, you know? And we as black people definitely, our feelings be in the business. But then these motherfuckers try to say, no, 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 business is business. We know there's a moral side to business that needs to be addressed. That in, in, in a capitalist society is often ignored. Speaking of feelings being feelings and black people know how feelings get involved. As of recently, there's been a lot of talk and a lot of back and forth with the whole Snoop Dogg and uh, you know, King. rest in peace with Kobe Bryant again. Bryant. Rest in peace, man. Gigi Bryant. Yes, um, yes. There was a lot of back and forth. Snoop Dogg obviously made a comment and um had to retract it a week later with an apology to Gail. Right. How you feel about that? Well. Here's the thing. I mean, I think we all kind of understand the outrage that um, Snoop was feeling at the time towards Gail, you know, especially towards someone as beloved to us as Kobe and as tragic 
as the incident was where yeah. not, we only lost Kobe, but he also lost his 13-year-old daughter. We could say, did she really need to ask that question at that moment? Mm. You know, that's, that's something. But then some people say, as a journalist, maybe she had to. I don't know. I've heard that today. Um, I actually heard that from, yeah, I heard that today. So, so, but as far as Snoop, you know, that's what I'm talking about, knowledge, wisdom right now. And not allowing your emotions. To supersede. to supersede certain certain uh, morals that you have already, uh -huh. okay? Man. We know as, as, as black men that we should not be cursing out our elder sisters. Even if they were wrong? Even if we feel they were wrong? Our elder sisters? You see what I'm saying? I get it. I, I could have maybe your contemporary sisters, you know, may you see what I'm saying? His, his the, 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 but, but, but this this woman is a 65 year old woman. But his Snoop's thing was you're attacking black uh, influential black public figures. Right, that's true. Her and Oprah. That's true. So you can say that. Did you feel that she was attacking? Absolutely. But but do we but do you have to do you have to call her dog face bitch? <laughs> no. You see what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. now where we're crossing no, lines yeah, exactly. yeah, of now we're disrespecting an elderly black woman. And, you know, you're just going a little far. And he recognized that. He did. He, he did. recognized that. So it's not I'm not saying anything that's that's wrong. He himself recognized that. But what I'm saying is if we are not so quick to respond to things, and especially on the gram and all that type of shit, if we just take a second to not allow our emotions to move us, see, an exercise in, in, in um, self-control is when you have something that you want to tell somebody, don't tell it yeah, right. for like a day at Hold least. It Hold it in. That's an exercise in control. So that you pass your feelings control. so much. And exactly. it's not feelings, emotion. Whatever it is, whether you're happy about something, angry about something, you feel compelled to say it yeah. in that moment. And a good exercise would to be not say it. Like they say back in the days, if you ain't have nothing nice to say, don't say nothing nice well, at no, all. I think it'd be less. You know what I'm saying is you might even have something nice to say. I'm saying even hold that. Mm. If you're feeling compelled to say it at that moment, because you got to train yourself and build that muscle mm. of not being, of blurting some shit out whenever you feel like some shit should be said in that moment. Mm. Less reactionary. Because sometimes your feelings will put you down the wrong road. No, a lot of times they don't. You know what I mean? So, again, due to knowledge, Think before you speak, before you do the wisdom, mm -hmm. you know? And I think we all can benefit from that. Respectfully, we definitely can. Streaming versus, uh, for lack of a better term, physical royalty, like Spanish. How you feel about that? Because you, I don't know, because Joe Budden's also um, was real adamant about expressing the fact that this should be um, something else we talked about, having a criteria. Who determines whether a thousand Spins on YouTube equals one spin physically. Right. You get where I'm coming from? What's up with that? How you feel about that? The, 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 who determines that are the people that benefit from that of type course, of shit. Yeah. Um, YouTube determines it. You know what I mean? Um, Lyra Cohen. Yeah, Leo Cohen. Leo Cohen. Right. Um, listen. Times are changing. You know what I mean? They, they've established their game already. Like, like, how do you, you how do you change it to something better that would benefit us? You see what I'm saying? Like, but okay. because there's a lot of arguments, you know what I mean? People used to have to go out and physically go to the store and buy some shit. Mm -hmm. Now they could just get on their phone, you know, type something in, press a button. I came right after that era. And you had to really go buy some shit. Right, and now they could just play some shit just on their phone from your whatever. bed before you even get up. Right, what, the what? effort is not as much, so I guess they're trying to 
act like since it's easier for these people to access. I don't look at it that way. They're That's trying a good to make it That's a good harder point. for you to achieve. Oh shit. Is that Leo Cohen? Nah. I, I told my man. <laughs> He's like I, I told my man that I was coming here to do this, right? And so now he just says, send me a picture of that salmon, Lord. It's over. It's over. Before, you'd have to you'd have to go and spend $20 per CD or per, per uh-huh. set. There's no overhead. Now, people can listen to your music, and if they like it, they like it, and it's free, so you can get a bigger fan base. But the artist suffers. A, a medium popular artist doesn't make much money. Only, like, the megastars on the streaming really get the bread. Right. Because... There's just no... Because you need, like, billions of streams to make in money. order to really make money on this shit. I haven't dropped the mic. I definitely, I damn sure ain't dropped the, to see, the we, beat machine or nothing like that. We would you know hate I mean? to see you drop the mic. I feel like I've opened up a new lane for dudes like me. Mm-hmm. For for people like me that, that are real hip-hop aficionados, the real ones. The ones that fucking... Authenticated and real, really have the real voice. Um, I've created the lane of a hip hop analyst that didn't it, exist before, mm. but they do it for sports and shit yeah. like that. You could be an analyst in all type of and shit. You've been, you've done, you've done voiceovers for ESPN. Yeah, I've been doing that. What's up with your acting? What's up with the acting? I What's just, uh, I've just been, I just did for life. Produced by 50 Cent. <laughs> um, and I also just did the uh, Tracy Morgan show. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Um, so season three, you'll see me in the season finale of the Tracy Morgan show, and then I'll also be in season four, but we ain't shoot that yet. You still got the wheel. What's that? You still holding the wheel. Yeah, like, like I'm one of these motherfuckers, you, you can't keep me down. Like, like I'm always going to pop up in some shit and make you mad. Like, if you thought that I'm just going to, you're going to, like, hate on me into oblivion, nah, it's not going to happen. You know what I mean? Because, first of all, my intentions are pure. I'm, like, people act like I'm some hater. I'm not a hater of nothing. I just love hip-hop. I love black people. You know what I mean? But I don't hate on motherfuckers the way they think I do or whatever the case may be. So the fact that I move off that love energy bring shit to me you know what I mean um and then I'm just talented at a lot of shit that I do like talent, you are. talented people are are often talented in in various areas as we can see <laughs> with the fools we can talk about it bring it back Give me that. let's 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 get cheers on that like like for real like like yeah what's next for Lord Jamal man after doing, after after being a pillar in hip hop, landmark in hip hop, right? You know, on your own with brand new beings, um, venturing off into acting, man. When dudes was like, with very few artists of that particular magnitude, for lack of a better, lack of a better term, were even going into like where big networks were even dealing with them, like at HBO. I remember the first time I saw you on Oz. I was like, oh, sh- yo, that's the god, right? Nah, I ain't the God. <laughs> and you played the God. Exactly. Unique. Supreme, Allah. Yeah, factual. Mm-hmm. I oh. played the God on, on the Tracy Morgan show. My name's See Divine that? on where, it. Where do you, how do you, after that, like, where, where do you go from that? Like, I know things can always be bigger. You can always want more, but that's like a big, that's a big thing. Yo, it's not like a big thing. It's a big deal. Mm. That I, you need to be credited for that. It's a big deal, bro. Yeah, I mean, when you got dudes running from their affiliation with the nation, right? You understand? Like, I'm gonna keep it green, Barry. Right. You got dudes that may, you know, throw a symbol out there, whatever they doing. Right, but they. But then to when hide they question, it they're in hiding it in right. a sense. And then you have someone that's like, I'm not letting it be known, but I'm getting casted for roles as being nothing other than myself. Right. I want to put some focus on that. Right. Fuck with me. Okay. Um, yeah, man. I mean, I felt like the gods needed to be represented in the media. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we were definitely represented in the hip-hop. How come you never seen us in any of these 
films or movies or TV shows or nothing like that. So when I had the opportunity, um, <clears throat> when they wanted to put me on the show and they didn't know who they wanted me to be, you know what I mean? It was only, I said, well, let me slide you this suggestion right here of who I could be. You know what I mean? You ever heard of the 5% Nation? Oh, what's that? You know what I mean? And then he was intrigued by that. You know what I mean? And, and, and you know what I mean? I made knowledge born to him and, and he loved it. You know, this is the creator and writer of Tom Fontana. And um, so that how, that's how that came about. For those that don't know, Tom, what, what else has he produced like Tom Fontana? He's done so much shit. He's done Oz, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Oz. Right now, it's uh, he produces King on the Hill. On, the cartoon? No, no. It's oh. it's called um, it's on Showtime and shit with Kevin Bacon. It's a oh, new show. okay, yeah. It's a new show. Um, some Boston shit, and it's also produced by Matt Damon and fucking it's his boy or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Yes. Um, he's done a lot of shit. Through the years, like he's got shit to do with Law and Order and all kinds kind of shit. Okay, yeah, Dick Wolf. Yeah, got you like that. Yeah, that's why you'll see a lot of their actors because I've done a lot of Law and Order shit I've as well. I've seen you in Law and yeah, Order. Yeah, that's I, right. I've done that like three different times. That's dope. Um, yeah, so they kind of work together in a way. Um, so yeah, you know. And now I'm playing God again. I got a brother, a black brother, Carl Jones. You're being God again. Yeah, so uh, okay, in, in Carl, a, in Jones, Carl Jones, you know, he's he's from like uh, Black Dynamite, Boondocks, and oh, all shit, of that type okay. of shit, you know. And um, he's one of the producers on um, on the Last OG, you oh, know. Right. And and he was actually looking for me because he had a character that that was God Body or whatever that you know, and he was looking for me to play that part. Okay, you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, I happened to be uh, shooting for life at the at that time when he called me, you know. So that was beautiful. So I went straight from one show to another show. What's up with Adam B.C., man? I mean, you ever kicked the, it with him? Like, I like Adam B.C. The Adam guy B. that plays Adam yeah, B.C. I mean, yeah, yeah, Adam Wale. Like, he's I a like great Adam guy. B. Like, like I like him. He's yeah. a cool motherfucker. Like, he's like from Adam Nigeria B. for yeah. real. Yeah, I got um, Adam B.C. up here. Make us some guys from Nigeria yo, for you, man. He's he's a great actor, man. Yeah. He's done a lot of shit, man. Um, I'm, what is he doing right now? I feel like he's in. We need to holler at him. Like he's man. in some show. I'm not sure. What's next for Lord Jamal? Oh man. Well, what I'm most excited about right now is my artist that I got coming out. Okay. okay. He got he got something dropping. My man, mm. my man Cook Stove God Cooks. I've been working with him for a minute. Um. We got a joint called Reasonable Drought. Mm. Mm. Reasonable like Drought. That. That's it sound Produ I like that. It sound dangerous. Produced baby. by Rock Marcy. The whole shit is wow, produced okay. by Rock Shout Marcy. Shout out to Rock Marcy, man. Now, I'm telling you, we're going to play some of this off camera for you before I leave. Yeah, you yeah. was telling me about it before, yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, this is getting ready to be the sh that shit. Now, you know, let me just refresh people's memory. Not only am I, you know, responsible for, you know, the energy and coming with Brand Newbie and all that, but I'm also responsible for bringing dead prez to the That's game. That's a fact. That's a fact. Let the record reflect. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. Okay. So one, two, and now Three, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. The best part? This one right here. The best part? <laughs> this guy right here is somebody special, man. That's all I can say. And when the world hears what he has to offer, they're going to fuck with him. And they're going to understand that, damn, Lord Jamal is really, he's a really hip-hop scientist. Like, can't wait. Like, Lord Jamal really knows his hip-hop shit. And I need to just shut the fuck up. And whenever he says some shit about hip hop, I just need to shut the fuck up and listen. Because he really does know what he's talking about. You do. You do. I you do. do. Yeah, you definitely do. And I'm glad you did part of that on, on the child, man. Absolutely. Let's feed the culture, man. Let's feed like the said, culture. Let's feed the culture on the child, man.
Good having you, brother. Always. Yeah, thank you know you. this is not your last visit. Oh, come on. Come back. Yeah. We family. You're going to be open. You're going to have to cook something show. for me next time. You. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I like that. Yeah. You know, it's only fair. We show proof. Yo, check me out. Fucking on the United Mean Godcast, Rod Digger and Godfrey. Hit me up on IG, all uh, social media at Lord Jamal. And uh, yeah, that's how we do it. Peace. On the child. On the child.